welcome to the slightly chilly French Alps, where I'm alongside a man who's been total domination by one French woman, Lauren McCoff. When you're thinking of who's going to be favourite coming into the Le Jay World Cup, it is so hard to look any further than Luan Lecomte. She hasn't led less than 90% of any race. Now, if that isn't domination, what is? I mean, yeah, that, that tells everything. I'm very happy to race here in France and uh, it's like a home World Cup. And the French fans are out in force for the first time in almost two years. It's a little bit more special with a lot of people around me. Maybe also the pressure today. I don't know if she can handle that. Okay, well, we'll find out. We're expecting scattered showers throughout the day, and that is going to turn this ski slope into a total ice rink. These conditions are going to split up the riders in two groups. There are the riders that really thrive in these conditions and know that everybody else is going to hate it, and they kind of peak on a day like this and then uh, there are riders that prefer the, the more dry conditions. We're going to see some interesting things out there today. Let's get going, English A! Firing straight out of the gate there, big field here today. The first lap, quite dangerous for the riders, hard to feel the right feeling on the bikes, especially in these slippery conditions. Wow, oh, a small crash already for Evie Richards here on these routes. So Lecomte takes the lead. This is worrying for everyone else. This is what she's done at the first three races of the year. This gap, when she gets it, so far has been insurmountable for the rest of the riders to cut to bridge. Rizved's being hounded by Pauline Ferran Provost. Garcia's the next to come through. She's riding away with it, Bart, on her own again. This is unbelievable. What are we seeing? <laughs> well, if those two can ride together, the Olympic champion and the world champion, they might be able to get back across that gap. So Rebecca came back to these wristbands and Pauline Ferrand de a group of three chasing. Pauline is back to Luana Lecomte. Well, that's, to me, very interesting. That's the first time we've really seen that, I think, this year, Mark. And Pauline Varane Provo now goes to the front, or does she? Well, Luana fighting back in the early stages. Look at this on lap two. Pauline, elbows, wow. Right. Oh, little back wheel yeah, slide. Yeah, these routes here are so slippery. And yeah. Luana Le Conte will take Pauline again. Well, we got a fight on our hands here, then, in Le France. The two French women are going at it. Oh, big crash for Rizved! Oh, I hope she's okay. Been down hard there. Now pulling for Amprevo on the deck. It's all going on here then. Now she's got to do that work all over again. And now Rebecca McConnell's with her. The Evie Richards then, fourth place. Really good ride again. Right there with the reigning Olympic champion. So the never ending climb on lap three of six. And it's the lonesome figure again of Loana. Listen to the crowds getting behind Luana Lecomte, they're enjoying this. Back in McConnell, into the front, doing the work. Resets it back to Pauline. Oh, and now goes in front of Pauline for Amprevo, wow. So Resets now coming up on Rebecca McConnell, look at this. Here are the most slippery part of the course for Luana Lecomte. They're on again, like all the other races this year so far. Pauline Ferrand for now a little bit further down. Ha! Well, Evie just made up yards, meters, just running around the inside there. Why not? So Evie now past Pauline Ferrand for Wow! Oh, look at the state of a, a war of attrition out there today. I didn't expect it to be that slick, but it was like crazy. Some parts you couldn't even ride. And there's Evie overtaking Rebecca McConnell to go into third place. Now will be her best World Cup finish in cross country Olympic if she can stay there. Well, grabbed a bit of front brake there. She was going ever. 
Marissa Fast. She is in a Liga of Owners, led here for well over an hour now. Well, Luan Lacom then comes up to the line, a big smile across her face as ever. Luana Lecomte lights up Leger. The perfect season continues. Four from four starts this year in cross country Olympic for this woman. Yes, yes, it's a, it's a very special to race a World Cup in France. And uh, I'm very, very, very happy to win uh, in France in front of my family, my friends. And, uh, well, it's been a strong ride for Jenny Rizve. It's a big crash earlier in the race. She got up quickly from it. Second of the last World Cup. Second here today in Leger. The Olympic champion heads to Tokyo on great form. And here comes Evie Richards with her best ever cross country Olympic finish. Third place then for the British rider. Amazing. I think he wanted the downhill is it? You're not crashing, you're not going fast enough. Oh, so good. I think the was so bad. Oh, so good though. Covered in mud from crashing, the world champion. Comes over the line in fourth place. Becca McConnell on the podium again for the Australian. Fifth place for her, minute 55 back. What a tough day at the office for these women. Compared to a dry course, on a dry course you can just push, like put all, all effort down in the pedals and just like go all out. But here you have to think so much, you have to keep your balance in a completely different way. And that's hard. Wow, that was some hectic racing, wasn't it? The conditions, look how much this track has cut up. And it just goes to show how good Luana Lecomte was today. She's proved that no matter what the pressure is, she can perform in any conditions. And it's pretty unlikely that these conditions are gonna get any better for the men's. If anything, they're going to get a whole lot worse. And we've got some fast Frenchies who are gonna to want to lay down a market in front of a home crowd. But the big two at the moment, Andre Sink and Matthias Flukiger, will be wanting to lay down a marker before they head over to Tokyo. And you can't rule out Tom Pidcock. He actually had a run in with a postal service van in France about a month ago and broke his collarbone. About four days later, he was doing push-ups on Instagram. So the guy is an absolute machine and he's back racing today. And we're underway. Goretzky in her front, Saru, Luca Braido. Vladaskulu is coming to the front. So hard conditions uh, today. No sign of Thomas Pitcock in the top 20 there. A very slippery course. Oh, chaos. Carnage further back. Let's see how fast Singh is here on these climbs. So it doesn't look like... Uh, Thomas Pitcock is coming forwards like we saw him earlier in the year in Elfstadt. Nearly a minute back already. Hard conditions for all these riders. Let's see this part of the yeah, course, yeah, yeah. how slippery it is for the man. Flukiger goes. Oh my goodness. Flukiger ain't waiting for anyone, but. Out onto lap two they go now. Sink though, right on his wheel. A little short on that first one, Andre Singh. Well, Mateus Flukiger loves to jump. He's flying. Throwing it into those ruts. Yeah, he will gain a lot of time in the descent to Singh. Happily, Saru go through. But Flukiger stamping on the pedals, looking dangerous, looking strong. On this never ending climb. Sink. Saru, Atali. It's chaos out there. Vision, the track, I think it's getting worse in front of our very eyes here. A really tough one, I have to say. Uh, sometimes I had a little bit like cold, so much rain, and uh, I didn't feel the legs anymore, and this is really strange to pedal sometimes. Look at the lead, Dimitesh. Look at who's got on lap three then. Uh, it's hard to, to manage actually the lead. 
especially if you go full gas and always have the same gap. Atrocious conditions out there. Whoa. Listen to the noise in the trees for Jordan Saru here then. Flukiger is on one, he's not waiting for anyone a day. Approaching the halfway mark in this race. Nearly 30 seconds his lead to Andre Singh, Hathley and Saru are the three chasers in that small group. British fans, Thomas Pitcock is in around 12th place at the moment. Flukiger. Flying, yeah, on the brakes hard there, locking up that back wheel. Ooh. And the gap is still absolutely massive. Saru taking some new glasses through the uh, tech feed zone. Yeah, the new glasses wouldn't last that long. <laughs> 100 metres, <laughs> tops. <laughs> yeah. Look at the state of them, but. Well, Andre Singh now looking like he might have split from Hathley and Saru, these two riders. Nino not that far back, leading this next chasing pack, the Olympic champion then. What a day's racing for these boys, look at it. 18 seconds the gap now, so it is coming down from Andre Singh. Can he catch that man? Rain looks like it's pouring out there again now. Well, Thomas Pidcock has left the race, a DNF by his name now, so Thomas Pidcock pulled out, not sure why. The leader at the moment, Matthias Flugiger, flying down these descents. 18 seconds from Sink to Hathley now, Saru there as well. And then a bit further back to the battle for the last spot of the podium between Brido and Scherter. Ah, on top, look at Brido. That took him a while to stop there. Oh, sick. He's putting everything into this. 20 seconds only, but the else is not that much. Out onto the last lap. One to go here in Leger, France. Big gear, big legs, lot of power from that man. This is an interesting battle still for the third place in the race. There goes Saru. So, yep, Saru finding something from somewhere then. An attack. See what he does here, a little bit of a show. <laughs> Another amazing performance from him. So Matthias Flukiger has conquered the mud of Leger. His second perfect weekend in two World Cup races. Matthias Flukiger wins in France. A brilliant ride start to finish. Not a wheel put wrong. Andre Singh, another brave ride for him. Second in Lear Gang at the previous race. Second again here today. And the biggest roar of the day for the Frenchman, Jordan Saru, the world champion. The madman. Happily comes across the line in fourth from South Africa. And this man, Nino Scherter. What a fighter on the World Cup podium yet again. Yeah, it's really cool after Leo Gang uh, with the short track and the cross country and then to you want again, that's that's pretty special and really, really cool. I lost many times in the downhill, then I go full gas every lap in the climbs and I just, I'm so tired now. To race in front of my home crowd and in these conditions, it's uh, unbelievable. I'm not even sure how this has happened, but the race is finished and the sun has come out. This is honestly some of the most challenging conditions we've seen in World Cup racing for the past couple of years. And wow, Matthias Flukiger recording the double-double. I mean, it doesn't happen very often. Only once, in fact, with Matthew van der Poel a couple of years ago. Andre Sink leaving it all out on the track and Jordan Saru celebrating a third place in style in front of a home crowd here in Leger. It was a wonderful weekend of racing. And I can tell you now that those podiums are gonna be rocking because the French fans have loved it as much as us. Now we do have a little break because there is the small matter of the Olympics, but it won't be long until we're back. And until then, enjoy yourselves. We'll see you in Lenzerheide.